Oh, yeah. yeah, man, it's going down. This Donnie Houston podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Uh, check it out, man. We got a real special, and I say this all the time, but this is a real special guest, man. You know what I'm saying? Real special guest representing that South, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, representing being black. You feel me? Representing just all the all the shit that I'm about, man. You know what I mean? I've, I've been watching this guy, man. He just he just told me it's been 20 years since this one particular record. So 20 years plus, man. He's been out here. He's an actor. He's a Grammy Award winning producer, artist, all of that, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hey, David Banner. Oh, man, I appreciate you, man. DH, man, what's happening, dog? Man, first of all, I want to tell you that I'm, um, I'm proud of you because what you've been able to accomplish in such a big market, bro, um, is amazing. And a lot of times, man, people are afraid to give each other their just due. I tell people all the time, I believe that I'm a God. And when I see another God, it doesn't take away from my light. I wanna help you shine. Cause when it's my time to shine, how can I, how, what's the tone on the show? Can I say fuck? You say whatever you want, yeah, yeah. I, I can yeah, say yeah, fuck. Whatever you want. Cause I had made up my mind, I wasn't gonna fucking cuss. So I was nah, like- No, 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 this shit open, this oh, shit wide open. We you know do whatever we want, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, so the thing is, man, is I just, when I see stuff, man, because sometimes, man, I, I is one of my ment- one of my mentees owns one of the most popular new shops in hip hop, like in hip hop culture. And um, at one time, which I can say it, you know what I'm saying, so y'all can shop with him. Um, Scotty ATL got a grill shop. I know Scotty yeah, ATL. Yeah, in in Atlanta, and on Melrose now in LA, and he's about to open up a shop in New York. Oh man! And I, I remember at one time he had called me and was like. Like, bro, I don't want to do this shit no more. Like, I want to get back to rapping. And I told Scotty, I was like, bro, what you doing is bigger, bro. He, like, if you can get a sustainable business, bro, where you making money for your family, like, every day, you can go back to rapping anytime you want to. I was like, man, build that business. And I'm not saying that I'm the reason why he kept going, but I know I was one of the influences. And look at what it's turning into now. They had him on the Steve Harvey show. He did the grills. He had, he flew to Italy and did uh, um, Issa Rae's grills for her wedding, mm. bro. You know what I'm saying? And and so sometimes it's those small words that people say. You know what I'm saying? I remember Pimp C telling me, like, Banner, you smart. It's going to take a little time for people to catch up with you. He was like, man, just make a couple of more like a pimps, man. And at the time, I didn't do it because I was... I was so focused on, you know, trying to make my people aware. And I realized you can be conscious as you want to, but if people don't understand, then it's just like you're not saying anything. Hmm. Malcolm said by any means necessary. And that also means that you may have to go back to the trenches. And as long as it's genuine and your intent is right, I'm going back to get my people. You know hmm. what I'm saying? But we jamming like a motherfucker at the same yeah. time. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, we just started off on this thing. I was going to start off on some other shit. I was on some uh, pulled up on a tour bus, rolling the blood. That hurt <laughs> ah! What's your baby mama want? Nothing but dick sucking. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, shout out to Domo. Come on, man. Domo did that. Come on. Domo did that? Yeah. Shout out Domo, man. Domo did three beats. Oh, my second album, man. Damo's a really fucking good friend of mine, man. No, shit. I fuck with Damo. I'm still You know what's crazy? Me. I Back in the day when I first started really coming to Houston, like Odd Squad, Blind Rob, mm. Jug, yeah. you know, of yeah. course, Devin, Devin on the new album. How early were you coming out here? Oh, long time. Long time before Like a Pimp. I'm talking about 90, 90, 96, 97. Oh shit! Ninety-eight. Was Crooked Letters and all that going at this uh, time, I, or were we you coming kind of... out here before? Hmm. Right, right, right before Crooked Letters. Like you know what I'm saying? I see ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, right around that time, bro. Like and broke, man. Like I'm talking about having to figure out how to get gas to get back. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and this crazy. y'all was y'all because y'all weren't in the system. Y'all just independent act, just on the grind, yeah, moving on, on the road. road. Come on, man. We was, we was from, the, from you know how hard it is in this rap game, and then we from Mississippi. The system wasn't even, like, man, it wasn't even comprehensible, bro. And it's funny because <laughs> I had a watch saying this, but it's funny, like, but then like when I when I put out the Firewater Boys and that started moving, you know, after the Crooked Letters, my first independent album, 
man, I used to come down here, man, I got a $70,000 check from Southwest Distribution. And oh, then they shit. went bankrupt the next month. Shout so, out Robert Gilliman, man. So I, I, he probably mad because I ain't never had to pay that money back, man. They went bankrupt, man. You know what I mean? But, like, I've I, I been on the grind, man. I used to go up and down just 20, man. Like, hmm. everywhere that I had to go, man. Like, we were there. I remember Goody Mob saw me in in Atlanta, and I beat them, I beat them to Houston. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Stopping in Birmingham. Coming all the way through, bro, like, until I got to Houston, man, and, and, like, that's always been me. I never forget, man, when I got that $10 million deal, uh, it was a white producer. The 10 million came at, at what point? This uh, was played around? That was around like a pimp. No, that like was like a, a pimp. Oh, you got like, 10 million like a pimp? Yeah, a 10 million Ooh, dollars. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but when I got that deal, man, I was, all right, quick story. Um. So you ever heard about my van and me sleeping in my van, yeah, being yeah, homeless, and I yeah. built a studio in my van? Yeah. Flip told me about that. Yeah, so so I built a whole studio in my van. Like a lot of times when people make excuses about what they don't have, like I used to make drops for the DJs, even do verses. If you go back and listen to Mississippi, the, the album, the first album, the interludes, I set up a studio in on in the in the pas- on the passenger side. You still in the van at that time? Yeah. And and I used to put the mic right next to like the steering wheel, and I would be I recorded my interludes in the van. People, I don't talk talk about this, but I I basically and I didn't think about this. I had a three state distribution plant in my van that I was sleeping in. Any store that wanted me, I would drive the shit as long as it was in the three states that was like two states that was around Mississippi. I drove that bitch. And what people don't know, I may have been one of the first artists to have a website on the internet to sell CDs because when I had, when I was selling the Firewater Boys, most artists didn't even know what the internet was. Hmm. I had a homeboy from college that had a, a radio show at LSU. Uh, he was in the computer programming and he had got a job at Xerox. So he was way ahead of technology. So he set up a website. And you can ask some people, man, like some people, like literally, I, when I would get the order in and he would call me, I would take that shit to their house, bro. You know, so anyway, the point was is that my van got stolen in Birmingham. And the only thing that, I, that they didn't steal was my pistol because I had my pistol on me. And I had all, I've always been good with vibes and feelings. Like, I guess that come from Mississippi and, you know, growing up with my grandmothers and all that kind of shit. So I felt like I knew what them dudes were. And something, I heard a voice that said, like, turn around. And so I called a girl that I was dating at the time. She drove from Jackson, Mississippi, and came and got me in Birmingham, right? Come to find out, that's when my van was found in the area that I thought it was going to be. But three months later, when Steve Rifkin called me and said he wanted to give me $10 million, I was still on the road. Guess where I was driving through hmm. when he asked me to sign the deal? Hmm. Birmingham. Oh, shit. I signed, I think it was 17th Street in downtown Birmingham at the Kinko's is where I signed that $17 million deal. So it was like, to me, God was telling me, if you listen to my voice, listen to your spirit, they can take everything away from you. And I give it back 10 million times. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Can you, I don't know if that, no, 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 that answers the question. No, 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 that's cool. But can you, can you take, because this is what, like. Can we talk a little bit about Cricket Letters? Because I know, mm-hmm. of course, everybody know the record with Pimp and all that. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think most people knew Cause like I, I was so honored that Screw, you know what I'm saying, did his thing to that song. But I don't even think most people knew that that, that, that had anything to do with me, and that that came from my group. Cause Paul Wall sampled it mm-hmm. for for yeah, one of his yeah. big joints. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I sampled it on uh, this new one. On Ch- like most people don't even know that. Like it was really cool. And if, if I had to clear it for me, I used to say, "Hey, me, can I use your song?" And I was like, "Yeah, me, you can." And I signed off on it. Oh, that's actually something that is real cool though, Donnie. Like when I sign contracts, um, I'm signed to a banner vision. So I have to sign, sign David off. Banner <laughs> and sign off David Banner. I think that shit pretty cool, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But um, yeah, Crooked Letters was was a lot of people don't know this about me. I, w- I was a battle rapper. You know what I'm saying? So like it was funny when when, when people were in the listening party. When they heard the lyrics, because there is no flaw section on this album on the God Box 2 at fucking all. 
I'll put this album against anybody. As a matter of fact, I want to do something one day where I tell a motherfucker, pick a number. Hmm. Pick a number on my album, then pick a number on anybody else's shit randomly. Spin that shit. I don't give a fuck. I'll put any song at any time against any song at any time on anybody else's album on this motherfucker. Verse for verse, beat for beat. Like, this shit's jamming. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.